there are over 70 emulator cores for RetroArch for the PlayStation 4. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up RetroArch on your PlayStation 4 for getting your retro game on. And it all starts right now. Hi, Blaine Locklear here to supercharge your video game hardware and software with restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content. Do that by subscribing. Let's get RetroArch set up on your PlayStation 4. You'll need to have a PlayStation 4 console that's on official firmware version 6.72 or lower for this to work because you'll need to be able to run either PS4 Hen or Mira. And you'll also need to have a USB drive that's formatted with XFAT in order to transfer some files to your console. There are two package files that are required in order to get RetroArch up and running on your PlayStation 4. They're both available at the GBA Temp website linked in the description below. The first one is the RetroArch package file itself. And the second one is a package file that's meant to just install the cores for RetroArch so that you don't have to download them one at a time. Scroll down to the download section. Both of these are hosted on the Mega website, so you can just open them up in separate tabs so that you can download these files separately. Once you get the tabs opened up, let's check out the two of these things because they have a certain rhythm to them on Mega to get these downloaded properly. I like to say that files have a rhythm on Mega because when you click on the green download button, sometimes it looks like nothing's happening right off the rip. For example, downloading RetroArch here, it's not a particularly large package file in and of itself, so you'll see it prepare the download and get it ripped and rolling pretty quickly. But in the case of something quite a bit larger like the Cores installer that loads over a gigabyte worth of content to download, it can take quite some time before you see any activity happen or you see the download take place. Hang in there, don't leave the page, and let Mega do its magic. You'll get the download that you need to make sure you get all the cores for RetroArch. This next step is optional. If you plan to transfer your games from your USB drive over to your hard drive on your PlayStation 4, you will need something like PS4 Explorer to do that. It's also a fantastic application just to have around for your PlayStation 4. It's linked in the description below. Click on the green download button on the Mega site to get the package file. The win here comes from putting the right files in the right places on the right drive. So let's slow our roll just a little bit and go through these one at a time. I actually have ROM files and the system BIOS files already pre-established in the downloads folder. And I've done that because they're all going to go on the same drive here in just a minute. In the ROMs folder, I have just a selection of Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo ROMs. In the system folder, I have some system BIOS files that some of the emulation cores need to run correctly. And in your downloads folder, you should have those three package files, RetroArch, the core installer, and PS4 Explorer. You'll need to extract the PS4 Explorer file as it's in RAR format. Use your favorite extraction tool. In this case, I'm using Zipware. It's pretty good, actually, and it's free. And extract that file. With everything extracted, you can delete the text file that's the changelog. You're not going to need this on your USB drive, but if you're interested in reading it, go right ahead. You can at least see the history of the product. You can also delete the RAR file, or you can archive it on your computer, your choice. You just don't need to copy this over to your USB drive, and it helps eliminate confusion moving forward. Once you've got that copied, you've got everything set up and in place that you'll need to copy over to your USB drive. Select everything that you've downloaded and uncompressed at this point and copy it. Leave the ROMs and system BIOS files in their folders and just leave the package files right on the root. Then go over to your USB drive formatted in XFAT format. In this case, I've named it subscribe as in subscribe to the channel. Once you get to your USB drive, paste everything that you copied over right onto the root of the USB, the three package files, your ROM files, and your system BIOS files. This can take quite a bit of time depending upon how many ROMs and system files that you intend to copy over. Once all the files have been copied to your USB drive, you can safely eject it from your computer, put it into your PlayStation 4 console, and power on the console. On your PS4 console, you'll need to run either Hen or Mira in order to be able to install the package files. From the web browser or from the help guide, access your jailbreak software. I'm using version 5.05 official firmware, so I'm going to go over to the section that's geared specifically towards 5.05. .05. 
on, on 5.05 rather than Mira is Hen. So I'm going to scroll down to Hen here and launch Hen. After a brief moment, Hen will launch and it will empower us to be able to install the package files on your PS4. Once you get the exploit running, press the PlayStation button on the controller rather than the circle button to go back to the home menu. Back on the home menu, now you can install those package files. Use the controller D-pad to go up and then all the way over to the right until you get to settings. Select it with the X button on the controller to continue. Inside settings, go all the way to the bottom. We're going to launch down to the bottom. You ready? Here we go. All the way at the bottom, you'll have that debug settings new menu that's opened up by your exploit. Select it with the X button to continue. The very first listing in the debug settings is game. Select it with the X button. You'll see the option to either have a package downloader or a package installer. Pick package installer to continue. Here you'll see all three of the package files you downloaded, RetroArch, the Cores Installer, and the PS4 Explorer. Pick Install All with the X button to install all of these package files at the same time. Remember that PS4 Explorer is optional but is required if you plan to move your ROM and System BIOS files over from the USB drive to your internal hard drive, which I'm going to demonstrate as part of this process. Once you've completed the install of all three of these package files, you can go back to the main menu of the PlayStation 4. To do this, just press the circle button repeatedly until you go backwards through all of the system menus and settings menus until you get back to the PlayStation 4 main menu. Back at your PS4 main menu, you'll see three new applications that you can run. You'll see the RetroArch Cores Installer, you'll see PS4 Explorer, and you'll see the RetroArch software itself. The best workflow for this is to run RetroArch first, because here's the deal. When you run RetroArch for the first time, it sets up folder structures on your hard drive that you're going to need. Launch RetroArch, and then all you have to do at this point is literally just go right down to quit RetroArch and quit right out of the software. Just be aware that X doesn't select, X goes back in RetroArch, circle selects. Select Quit RetroArch to go back to the main menu. RetroArch doesn't require you to press Options to close out the software in the menu on the right. Now go over to the RetroArch Cores Installer and launch it with the X button. When the Cores Installer first launches, you'll see a black screen for just a moment, and then when you see Cores Installer come up, it'll ask you if you want to install the Cores. Select OK with the X button to continue. The course installation process can take several minutes, time accelerated here to save time. Once it's done, press X on OK to continue, and you'll go back to the main menu. Once you're done with course installer, you do not need it any longer. Press the options button on the controller, and use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to delete and select it with the X button. Then confirm the deletion by pressing X on OK to continue. If you plan to use your USB drive to play your ROMs, you can skip this next part. However, I strongly urge you to check out PS4 Explorer because it's a fantastic app and it gives you access to do all kinds of amazing things with your PS4 and homebrew software. When you first load PS4 Explorer, you'll be asked which version of the firmware you're on. In this case, it's 5.05. And what language? English in this case. This is the main interface. You can press the Options button and it'll show you what the controls do. We're going to be concerned with several primary controls here and we'll go through them one by one as we go through the interface. To get to the USB drive, press left on the D-pad. It takes you from what's called the Home menu over to the USB Zero drive. To copy your ROMs from your USB drive to your hard drive, you can go into the ROMs folder. I have them organized in their own subfolders here. Press right one and right two, those top triggers, to select them all. Then press triangle on the controller to pull up the pop-up menu. From here, scroll down with the D-pad until you get to copy and select it with the X button. To go back to the home menu so that you can access the hard drive, press the right analog stick down and in. That's called the R3 button. Press it down and then you'll go back to the home menu. This is the root of the PlayStation hard drive. 
RetroArch is stored in the data folder. Scroll down to get to data, select it with X. RetroArch folder will be in the data folder, select it with X. I recommend that you paste the ROM folders in the downloads folder inside RetroArch. This is the customary place that other versions of RetroArch use, so I recommend using it this way for consistency's sake. Inside the downloads folder, press the triangle button for the pop-up menu, and scroll down with the D-pad to paste and select it with the X button. Press left on the D-pad to go back to the USB 0 drive. As you may know, some RetroArch cores require system BIOS files. Go to your system folder and drill into it with the X button. Inside there, press right one and right two triggers on the controller at the same time to select all of the files. Then press triangle for the pop-up menu and scroll down to copy and select it with the X button. Go back to the home menu by pressing the right analog stick in. From the home menu, you'll need to go back into the data folder then go into the RetroArch folder. And in the RetroArch folder, scroll down until you get to the System folder. Press triangle on the controller for the pop-up, scroll down, select paste with the X button. That's everything you need to copy over to the hard drive. Press the PS button on the controller to go back to the main menu. Remember to press Option on the controller and press X on Close Application to close out PS4 Explorer then press the X button on OK to confirm. Let's go back into RetroArch from here. Scroll over on the home menu to RetroArch and then select it with the X button to launch it. Before you start loading up and playing your ROMs, there are some things that need to be downloaded in RetroArch for some of the cores to work correctly, including the Sega Genesis core I'm demonstrating in this video here. Use the D-pad to navigate down to Online Updater and select it with the circle button. Remember in RetroArch, circle advances and X goes backward in the menu system. You've probably got the most up-to-date cores, but I'd recommend that you run the Update Installed Cores application first. This will make sure that all of the cores you have installed to your PS4 are the most up-to-date. I would also strongly recommend that you run each of these updates and one of them is absolutely mandatory. Update the core info files select it with the circle button, come down to update assets and select it with the circle button. This one is mandatory. The Genesis core, for example, would not run without updating the assets. In fact, when you try to run that core, it tells you that it's missing assets. Update the joystick profiles, although you're probably already using the PS4 original controller that came with the console anyway. Select update cheats with the circle button, if that's your thing. Hey, no judgments here. Scroll down and select Update Databases. Select Update Overlays. And also select Update GLSL Shaders. Optionally, you can turn on the on-demand thumbnail downloader, but it does slow down performance. Once all of these are done updating, you can press the X button repeatedly until you get back to the main menu for RetroArch. All right, it's game time. Let's get the ROMs and systems set up as favorites in the navigation on the left navigation pane. Scroll down to import content and select it with the circle button. From here, select scan directory. Select it with the circle button. You'll need to tell it which directory you want to scan. And in this case, it depends. If you're leaving them on the USB drive, go to USB zero and then go to your ROMs folder and select the ROM folder that you want to scan and simply select scan directory. But in this case, they're on the hard drive. And I'm using an SSD here, which is why I wanted to move them over. It's a tremendous speed benefit, obviously. So from here, click on the parent directory, the one with the slash on it. They're in that same place we just copied them over in PS4 Explorer. So go to data, then go to the RetroArch folder, and then the Downloads folder. And in the Downloads folder, you'll see the ROM folders that I copied over. One for Genesis, and then one for SNES. Scroll down to select Scan Directory, 
and select it with the circle button. This will actually scan all of the ROMs in all of the subdirectories that are in the downloads folder. This keeps things very well organized and RetroArch has no problem dealing with a folder structure set up this way. All of this prep work is going to make adding games in the future so much easier for you. You can just dump them right in the ROMs folder and play games to your heart's content this way. All right, go back with the X button repeatedly until you get to the RetroArch main menu. Now if you look in the left navigation, you'll see two favorites folders created. You'll see one for Sega Genesis and one for Super Nintendo. Let's fire up one of my favorite Sega Genesis games of all time as a test, OutRun. Scroll down to select the game you want and select it with the circle button. You can leave these, by the way, in zip format. I wasn't completely clear about that earlier on, but leaving them zipped is just fine. It'll deal with it, no problem at all. Select Run with the Circle button and you'll be prompted to which core you want to use. It will make automatic recommendations for you, which is really helpful. You can just pick the top core, any core that you please, and select it with the Circle button. Then select Run to start the game. RetroArch will load the ROM that you've selected into memory and start the game with the appropriate core. And just like that, you'll be jamming on the open freeways in your Ferrari Testarossa. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comments and description below. Thanks so much, I really appreciate our time here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.